What's up, guys? My name's Sean. If you landed here, you're watching Scar My Guitar. Now, some cool stuff's been going on around the channel. Me and wifey's been making some cool guitar kits. Now, I'm almost willing to bet there's a couple of you guys out there that would love to buy one of these guitar kits. But you're an old knuckle bone and you're worried you ain't gonna be able to put it together right. Don't sweat it, man. Every single person you see doing anything cool with guitar started their adventures in knucklehead mode. And if you've been on the fence about buying one because you didn't know how to put it together, well, that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna show you how to put together one of my guitar kits and make it jam. But I wanna say this before we even get started. See, this isn't really a guitar kit you're getting from me. What you're getting from me is a custom guitar. And that ain't no joke. That's a 5A flame maple top right there. It's a flame maple fretboard with stainless steel frets. It's a walnut neck with a walnut body. The purple heart strip up the middle. Some flame maple in the back there. Yeah, old China man ain't kicking nothing out like that. This is definitely a custom guitar. It's not really a guitar kit. So with that being said, that's gonna be enough lip flapping. Let's make it happen. Now your guitar kit's probably gonna come to you just like this. Nice flat slab body. A neck that's gonna need some fret work, some sanding, some finishing with the nut and stuff. But if it were my guitar kit and it was sent to me, I would start with the body. The first thing I would do to it is I would get this sanding attachment from Home Depot for $9 or whatever it is, $7.99 I think. It comes with some sandpaper. And I'd use the 40 grit disc first. Now like I said, if it were my guitar kit, this is what I would do. Now this is pretty rough from that old 40 grit right there, but I got another pad that's got 220 already on it, brand new, let's run it. And that finer grit sandpaper is really making that maple pop. Woo! So we're gonna need to clean the sides up some. We're gonna use this regular old sanding pad. I think this was $5.99 from Home Depot. I got some straight 80 grit on there. Let's do it. Now this body's got some sharp edges on it, especially after sanding on it like that. Now there's a bunch of ways we can knock these sharp edges off. We could use a file with some sandpaper, we could use some rasp, there's tons of ways we could do it. My preferred way to do it is with this half inch round over bit. I'm going to use a full size router if you have this bit and you want to use a trim router. You could do the same thing, probably make it a little easier, but I got it already in my full size so let's get it going on. Now this thing needs tons of hand sanding. Let's get on it. I'm gonna we'll start with some 220. Thank you. 
Now I've been through tons of sandpaper, but we're finally here. 3,000 grit. And the reason I'm going to use some 3,000, it just went from 1,000 to 3,000. The reason I'm going to hit it with this is because this is a really nice flame maple top. And if I use this on it, that guy should pop like crazy. Not much coming off. That little bit of dust you're seeing is from earlier sanding. What it's doing now is it's bringing that really good figuring out in there. You see that? Yeah, it's going to bring that flame out. When we stain it, it should pop. Make sure I get the sides real good. So that binding looks like it's really there. Good enough. Let's go stain this bad boy. I got this from Michael's Arts and Craft. It's just tie-dye. Now I'm going to rub this on here, and I'm going to try to keep it from getting on the sides. Okay? As much as I can. Might have to sand a little bit. But I just want to do the top here. Right where I sanded the edge good. Boy, that looks killer already, don't it? Yes, sir. Now, you notice I'm not doing any crazy stains or sta sanding anything back or anything like that. I see guys doing that stuff all the time. I don't never could figure out why. I'm sure some of you guys are about to tell me in the comments, but please, for the love of God, tell me why I need to stain this and then sand it back and stain it again. <laughs> Achieve different effects. I did tattoos for a long time. I learned how to mix colors without being able to take any back. But we're not mixing any colors here. We're just throwing this straight blue on here, nice and pretty. Boy, look at that. Man. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. That top was something clean, wasn't it? Man. Yeah. <laughs> Now we're going to look and see. See, I didn't rub it over the edge of the maple, so now we got a fake binding. But man, that is sick top, huh? <laughs> All right, that's enough gawking at it. Let's get to this neck. Now we've got a beautiful specimen for a neck here. But it is going to need some fret work. Okay. So I'm going to show you what I would do. We're not going to get into too much detail because there's tons of videos on how to do fret work. I'm sure all you guys already got some general idea. So I'll just give you the quick rundown here. This is my favorite fret crowning file. I think I paid $10, maybe $15. Matter of fact, it was $20 in a kit of stuff. I've showed you guys this many, many times. This is my favorite one. I like it better than any Stumac file. Fret Guru. Now to level the frets, we're going to need a nice flat file or a nice flat piece of wood or a flat piece of steel or something we can put some sandpaper on. Or we need the proper radius block so we can get a perfect level. But if you don't have that, you can pick up one of these files right here from Harbor Freight. I think I paid $4.99 for this. Then what I do is I just cut the end of it off with my hacksaw, glue it on a piece of wood, shape the wood up so I got a nice little handle for it. So then I can level frets with it, file whatever I need to with it. I use it for the sides of the neck. Now I could use this to level the frets. But since I have a radius block, that's what I'm going to use. Most guys are going to tell you to tape your fretboard off. I'm going to tell you to do the same. I've done this 500 necks I've put frets on and more. I don't really need to tape it. I'm going to clean it up in the end. Now for the leveling process, i got some 80 grit sandpaper on here. Some of you guys are going to say I'm crazy. 
And that would be crazy if these were nickel or copper frets, but these bad boys are stainless steel. They're medium jumbo and they're the highest ones you can get. These are some big frets. This is barely gonna do anything to it. Now before you start trying to level anything, you need to make sure the neck is flat. I got this notch straight bar off Amazon. It was $7 delivered to my house. But if you don't have this and you don't have $7 to order one, and you got a yardstick or something that's nice and straight, just go ahead and put it on there and notch you some notches in it so it'll go past the frets onto the fretboard. Because you don't want to put it on the frets. You want to make sure the fretboard is straight. All right, we're going to set it down on the fretboard in between the frets here. That's looking really good already. I already made sure it was flat when I made it. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to hit this guy with this. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. We're going to stop at ten. Notice I only went one way. Now I'm going to break out the fret rocker. We're going to check the frets and see what we got. This neck was really flat beforehand, before I put the frets on. So it shouldn't need a ton of fret work, that's for sure. We're looking good here. A little bit there. First one to rock so far. So I'm going to do this one more time. Stop at each fret. Stop here. Stop at this one. 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 A couple more down on the 12th fret, just for good measure. Now let's check them all again. All the way down. Nice. Clean and pretty. Okay. Can you see the very little the 80 grit took off? You watched me swat this thing a bunch of times with it. Didn't really do much to it, did it? Didn't really do very much, huh? <laughs> so the next step is grab this guy get the crowning that's where you need to tape your fretboard off because this thing will pop right off these frets and scar this fretboard right up but here's what i'm going to do now i like to take one of my chisels and use it as a guide keeps it from scarring up the fretboard i'll put it on here like this i'll put my fret crown and file right up next to it it just keeps it from slipping off of there Let's me really get the crown without having to worry about scarring the fretboard up. But that's how I do it. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me crown all these frets. Now when I'm done doing my frets, I always take a razor blade and clean my fretboard up with it. Before I put any oil or anything else on it. I just scrape it really nice and clean. Just always looks better when you get done doing this to it. All right, we got all the frets straightened out. Let me hold it up here. 
Let's see what happens when we apply oil to this flame maple. Keep going. Just let it suck it up good. There we go. Let's get it in there. Ooh. It's looking pretty sick. So this thing's good and dry. Let's go ahead and hit it with some tongue oil too. Ooh, man. Ooh. That thing's giving me gas. <laughs> man. It's giving me gas. Look at that. Now we're talking. Yeah, now we're talking. Yep. There we're there. Whoa. I said, whoa. <laughs> Look at that guy now. Look at that binding, dude. We got to shape the headstock. We want to be able to see the dang thing when we cut it, right? Going to try to draw it similar to something we've seen before. <laughs> Well, we won't name any names, but not real, not super exactly the same, but something close. Right? Something like that. Just going to use a regular old jigsaw to cut it out. Oh no. <laughs> we did it, Dan Thompson. Well, we got it clean, but we did a little Dan Thompson from Guns and Guitars action here. <laughs> so we're gonna have to patch this back on here. Nice and cleanly. Not a problem, watch this. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of this stick fast right here. Put it on there real good. Then I can finagle this guy back in place, like so. All right, let's let that dry for a minute. Wow, that thing does a great job, darn it. Quick, too. 
Look at that. <laughs> All right, it's party time. Woo! We are here at the Gandering stage. Even Tiger said he wants to check it out. <laughs> Look at that guy. Yeah. I didn't get the little sanding of the headstock on video like a dummy. I didn't turn the camera on. So what do we got left? Put the nut on it. Put it together. That's going to be in the next video. Now look, if you want one of these guitar kits, there's a link right here in the description to eBay. I got a couple of them up there. But over the next couple of days, we're going to drop a couple more up there. And there's keychains and all kind of little cool stuff to help support the channel. Because we finna hit the road. And as always, I really appreciate you watching. But until next time, don't you touch my scar guitar.